Now, we've been talking this morning about the second part of the feasibility study that was undertaken by the federal government a number of years ago into a high-speed rail network along the eastern seaboard, that second part being released today. Greens leader Christine Mill joins us now from Canberra because the Greens were instrumental in that being put in place in the first place. Christine Mill, good morning. Good morning. In fact, I think this is one of the, the, uh, the elements that you asked Julie Gillard to put in place as part of Green support for her government. The second part being released today, we're seeing that it would take, according to the feasibility study, many, many, many years to build, many billions of dollars to construct as well. So it's looking like a, a fanciful, if not impossible, option at this stage, isn't it? Uh, no, I think it's a practical option, an urgent option, and I'm very excited by it. It's why we did negotiate with uh, Prime Minister Gillard to bring on high-speed rail in Australia. You only have to look around the world at uh, economies uh, that are moving uh, in this way. The Chinese have rolled out you know, thousands of kilometres of high-speed rail in recent years. Uh, one of the huge costs uh, to business, to the community, is congestion through airports, the time that air travel is taking, and of course uh, the enormous benefits in terms of uh, greenhouse gases if you were to remove uh, those, those uh, flights out of the skies. But the convenience issue is the great one. Imagine joining uh, Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane, Canberra with high-speed rail. It would make such a difference to the way that we live in Australia and how people do business in Australia. $114 billion. How does that get paid for? Well, it's a nation-building program over a period of time, and uh, we haven't seen the report yet about the uh, funding options that are discussed in it, but I have heard the minister say that overwhelmingly it would be expected to be Commonwealth government funding, and I would expect that would be the case as well, and we need to look at how that can be done. But you have to ask yourself, what sort of country do we want to live in? What future do we need? What infrastructure do we need to make Australia remain a uh, competitive economy but a great place to live? And this is what nation building is about. It's why we've supported the NBN, the rollout of, of fibre to the home. And it's also why we're now saying we need high speed rail in Australia. I think uh, the overwhelming majority of the population would see this as the kind of nation-building exercise governments ought to get behind. No doubt, but, but I ask again, with budget deficits it would seem projected or going to be projected for the next few years again, how does it get paid for? Well, that's going to be up to government to raise money. That's how in the so past... The green, so the Greens say, go ahead, uh, please uh, put a feasibility study together, but you know, we, we can't help you there when it comes to paying for it. No, well, the government will have to put forward a funding model of how that might be done. But the issue is, what do we need for Australia in the long term? If we sit here and say it can't be done, we watch as every other major economy rolls out high-speed rail. What we need to be doing now, and I understand in the report there will be the preferred route, what we ought to be doing now is starting to do environmental impact assessment on the preferred route, starting to look at putting money in place to buy and acquire the land that's required. Uh, and also we need in the federal department now an implementation unit, not just a small unit that we've had to actually uh, look at these feasibility studies, but let's get on with it. We can't wait generation after generation. This is about the fifth report into high-speed rail. It is something that you have to spend money to make money on, and the report, I understand, says that the return to the economy would be about $2.30 for every dollar invested. That has to be a good return for the country. Would the Greens be interested in one of those funding models, including some and private participation, the, uh, the public-private partnerships that we've seen uh, in relation to tunnels and other infrastructure projects around the country? Well, we've seen some pretty bad examples of public-private partnerships, but having said that, there is a lot of money in superannuation funds, but I, would, I don't know whether uh, they have been uh, consulted as part of this report or not, but there is certainly a large amount of money in superannuation funds which may or may not be available according to those negotiations. The issue for me is that you must make a decision about what infrastructure the nation needs. And in the Greens' view, we need the NBN rolled out as quickly as possible. We need to get to 100% renewable energy, which means investment in grids as well as in new renewable um, infrastructure around the country. And we need high-speed rail. And when you look about the costs that will be saved as well, because if you take people out of airports and take that pressure off airports, then you are going to save substantial amounts of money and you are going to save a lot of congestion in the air 
and it's going to make a big uh, improvement to the convenience in people's lives as you find when you travel in Europe. Nobody flies short distances in Europe. They yep. get on high-speed rail. Now, the Greens, of course, have been very critical of the government's decision to shift single parents off the higher parenting payment to Newstart, and we're seeing our ABS figures now showing that the, there's been a, 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 even more of an increase in the rise of the casual workforce, but the unemployment rate has stayed largely static. Are you linking those two up? What are you seeing then in terms of perhaps those single parents managing to do OK on Newstart or maybe even finding some work? Well, what's happening is a lot of those people are having to go and uh, try and find second jobs because a lot of those uh, single parents were already in the workforce in some uh, capacity or another. It doesn't, nothing about these figures alters the fact that you have got the mining industry not paying their way and the government trying to make up the difference by taking the money out of the pockets of single parents. And the Greens have argued that not only do we need an increase in New Start, as indeed not only the, the social justice but the business community argues as well, and we are campaigning for that in this year's budget, but we also want to see those all single parents uh, have that money restored to them. That is critical to get people out of poverty and to actually give uh, those people and their families an equal opportunity in Australia. Good to talk to you this morning, Christine Milne. Thank you.